Welcome back to the IdahoSports.com State Tournament Preview Special. Uh, Brandon Bainey joined by Logan Green, one half of our broadcast duo for the 3A State Baseball Tournament. This will take place Thursday through Saturday at Northwest Nazarene University in Nampa. Logan, you and I were at the 3A State Tournament last year, and it was, to me, you know, people can say what they want, but I thought it was the most exciting tournament. Yeah, and, and it – Outside of Marsh Valley kind of just dominating their way through, um, the rest of the tournament had a lot of storylines and a lot that even translate over to this year. I mean, even Marsh Valley just blew through that tournament. I mean, and they did, and they're back in that top spot again this year, and rightfully so. I don't think there's anybody that can argue with that. Um, I think you look back, again, there was a lot of stuff that happened last year, right? Kimberly. Coming in hot, uh, we thought maybe they it, it was a clash course. Maybe uh, you would see Kimberly and Marsh Valley. Kimberly leads in the top of the fourth inning. Uh, they lead Fruitland three to one. They make a pitching change, and this is something you guys talked about on other uh, other portions, right? You make a pitching change, saying, "Hey, I, I, I think we're good here." And, and again, I'm just this just speculation, right? From what we saw with our eyes, uh, thinking, "Hey, I'd like to have this arm on Saturday." Um, you had the arms available Saturday, but it just wasn't in the game you wanted it to be. Fruitland makes a run to the state championship game uh, with a super young team. What do they start? Seven freshmen, six or seven, something like that last year. Um, so just a very uh, wild tournament it was last year. A lot of the same teams are back. A lot of new storylines emerging from that from last year. So there's a lot. To, there's a lot in play here in the 3A tournament. For sure. Shauna Engen says, Marsh Valley, go Eagles. And they are certainly the favorite. Hey, if you want to get in on the action like Shauna just did, just throw your comment uh, down below like Jared Hall just did. Homedale Trojans. Yes, we want to hear you shout out your favorite team, your favorite player. Ask us a question. Throw it in the comments. We will throw it up on the screen. And also, as you're watching this tonight, uh, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, if you could hit the like button, uh, subscribe button, and share this. That's going to help everybody that couldn't be here live tonight uh, come back tomorrow, the next day, Thursday, etc., and find it a little easier with all the social media algorithms. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that bracket up on the screen, Logan. And as we take a look at this uh, 3A state tournament bracket, what's what's the matchup that you're gravitated to right away? Well, okay, so obviously there's the attractive game, right? Fruitland and Homedale, uh, a rematch of the, the, you know, the 3A SRV championship game. It'll look a little bit different being the first game out of the block instead of being the end of, you know, end of a tournament line. Uh, but that was a game of Home, Homedale won. Homedale won the conference. And uh, this is a Homedale team that that can score. And I think that's the thing is Homedale is not a team that you can – uh, you know, hey, we'll, we'll put in guy number two here and we'll sneak by him. They're not a five seed that you're just going to, uh, you know, just throw in somebody and sneak by. You got to have your best guy out there or they're going to hit and they are going to hit. Um, so that's intriguing. But I look at that three six line. OK, this is and from both sides. Right. Well, last year we saw Fruitland make a run as a seven seed uh, kind of the. And we know Fruitland had has been a dominant team over the last, you know, 15 years or whatever. And uh, but but that team had not. They were new and fresh and young, uh, kind of nothing to lose. We're here. We're happy to be here. And they make a run. I, I get that vibe from Payette. Right. There are just we're back at state. It's been a while. We're happy to be here. And uh, you know what? Nobody really knows maybe kind of what to expect from them. And I just think they're a dangerous team. Now, on the other side, Sugar Salem, I think they're the team that's improved the most from last year. Right, the Diggers last year they they win that first game against Snake River in a four five game on a walk off, uh, and and then they they run into March Valley who you know mercy rules them ten zero game over. Uh, so yeah, I, I I think they've gotten better this year, and I think that they are a dangerous team, and I think they're a team that has a real shot to win it. Um, I it's tough, you know, you look at that that the winner of that game could potentially. Um, make a run to the championship game. And, and you know, I, and I think it could be either one of them um, for different reasons, that Sugar Salem is better than they were a year ago and that Payette has nothing to lose and they're just kind of, uh, you know, my lower seed dark horse in the tournament. 
Yeah, those top six seeds, it really would not surprise me if any of them found themselves in the championship. And, right. you know, Timberlake and Gooding, the seven and the eight, have, have a chance, but their road is a little steeper just because of who they play in the first yeah. round with Kimberly and Marsh Valley, right? Yeah, and that's nothing on them. It's just those two teams are very good, and there, there's just no way to get around it. Uh, that Marsh Valley team is is – they're good, right? I think they have one loss on the year to Burley, who's a 4A school. Uh, they've already beaten Kimberly, uh, you know, a couple of times this year. Uh, one was close-ish, one was not, but that was at the beginning of the season. Um, and it's, so I just look at it and I say that those two teams, but then Sugar Salem, right? Sugar, they played, I thought, a pretty good schedule. Uh, reached out, played some 4A teams throughout their schedule. You know, their losses on the year are to Pocatello, a qualifier at 4A, Wood River, a qualifier at 4A, and Kimberly, the number two seed in this tournament. And and that that's it. And that Kimberly game was 5-4. to four. So, I, I don't know. I just think Sugar, you know, but if you go back to Kimberly, they're just a really good team. And they were a team last year that, they you know, they ended up winning the consolation championship, and they showed us who they were. They had two shutouts the rest of the way, right, after they, they lost that first game. Um, and they're just, those top three are really good. And that it's just no knock on those, you know, those bottom two. It's just you're, you're running into a buzzsaw there. Yeah, and Sugar was a very young team last year as well, relied on a number of sophomores that are now yeah. juniors. And, and we think about Sugar Salem, and they win all the time in every sport. Yep. Well, not baseball. This is the kind of new. And head coach Brady Gardner told me that last year when we were talking to him at at state he said look we want our baseball team to be on the level of what our other athletic programs are and it's taken a lot of hard work and a lot of off-season work and um they, they've gotten there and so yeah here's another sport that sugar yeah. salem can go be great at <laughs> you know that uh sugar salem and bear lake the only teams playing this weekend that have a chance to do the trifecta right you won your football championship you won your basketball championship and a chance here to, to finish finish it off with baseball um, I, I just think that sugar team is very dangerous outside of the top two. Um, I know that's clear. well, if you pick somebody outside of the top two, of course you'd pick three, but I, I, I just think that if anybody's going to upset Marsh Valley, I, I, I like sugar Salem to do it. Yeah. I, I like, I like the diggers there as well. And uh, another team that's dangerous to me, Logan is Homedale. They are yeah. dangerous to the opponent, but sometimes they're dangerous to themselves. We talked about this. They really commit a lot of errors. That's their one kind of bugaboo is they, they throw the ball around sometimes, and that can lead to some, some lopsided scoring games where the pitching is phenomenal and they give up nine runs, but like two of them were earned because the rest were errors. Um, and so for Homedale, we talked about it. They won the district championship in District 3. And we, we both said the way that uh, on our Treasure Valley prep cast where we talk about just District 3 sports, we both said the way that Homedale handled their pitching staff in districts was masterful, where they pitched Dylan Fine, or excuse me, Peyton Fine in game one, Dylan Fine, their ace in game two against Payette in the semis, which was a tight game. Uh, for mm -hmm. those that don't know, uh, Colin Heisel of Payette took a perfect game into the top of the seventh inning. The wheels fell off for a brief moment. Homedale scored four times and won four to one. And like that, it was over. And then they got to the championship and did what they had to do in a high scoring game against Fruitland. And so I'll, I'll be curious to see if the pitching strategy is the same for Homedale here at state. Yeah. And you, like you said, they've given up some runs, right? They, they gave up double digits when they played Marsh Valley. They, they gave up 13 or 14 to pay at earlier in the year. Uh, but then at the same time, I mean, you, you see what they've done. They scored 17 against Melba, 15 against McCall Donnelly, 14 on Weezer, 12 and 10 on Buell, and, and then 10 on Fruitland. And so, again, I mean, they're a team that, it, like you said, it'll be interesting to see how that pitching, what they do. do. Do you just shake hands at the beginning and say, hey, look, let's play another one of those 10 to 9 games, and uh, and we'll see who comes out on top. And, uh, and, and then you have your ace on the next day. I'm just kidding. That doesn't occur. I'm, I'm just making stuff up. But uh, we'll see what we get. I mean, we saw it last year. I think 20 runs, Homedale scored against Weezer or something like that. I can't remember. I mean, there was one game that, uh, okay, so it was 12 to 11 was the score of the first round game, Weezer and Homedale last year. So they, they put up 12 runs, and then they gave up 20 runs, or excuse me, they that was Fruitland put up twenty runs, but you know that 
they can hit. They can score the ball. You know, they can score the ball. They can score runs as they go. They can hit the ball. Um, they're they're also a dangerous team that if you get them there and you, and they've got the, you know they've got fine on the mound. Look look out. You know, if they were to run into a March Valley on day two and fines available, that's anything can happen in a state tournament. Yeah, and everybody's got one guy, right? Payette's got high sell and fine for Homedale, Zane Bidwell for Fruitland. Um, you look at Marsh Valley, yeah. and they've got Stanton Howell. The, the key is, is Marsh Valley's got th three really good pitchers. Jason Jones, statistically, has been their best pitcher this year, and he's been their number two guy. Their number three pitcher has been phenomenal this year as well. In spurts. And so overall, Marsh Valley's still kind of the, the team to beat. But they, there's going to be a lot of – it might be like last year, Logan, where Marsh Valley – is kind of the lead dog, but there's a lot of intrigue two through yes. eight. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. I think there is a lot of good out there. It's just going to come down again every tournament. They always say it is, is your pitching. And, you know, everybody's got a guy, right? Everybody does. It's pretty clear. And if you need a guy to go out there and win a game, I think, I think everybody could do that. But who's got it that's going to last all weekend into Saturday evening? Right. Uh, let's take a look at our 2A play, or excuse me, our 3A players to watch. We picked one from each school. Uh, it is uh, Zane Bidwell from Fruitland, uh, Braden Martin from Gooding, Dylan Fine, the ace for Homedale, uh, River Chadwick for Kimberly, who's a spark plug in the lineup, Jason Jones from Marsh Valley, Colin Heisel from Payette, Dawson McAnelly, smooth fielding shortstop for Sugar Salem, and Caden Robinette for Timberlake, who also is a very sneaky pitcher. On the mound for Timberlake, Logan, which player are you most excited to watch? Look, I'm going to – let's go with Dawson McAnally, right, from Sugar Salem. I think that he is a Swiss Army knife to say, right? So you look what he can do. He's batting 478 on the year. He's got 19 stolen bases, three homers, 24 RBIs. But it, you mentioned, uh, great. He was voted the player of the year by the post register, right? Um he played middle linebacker for the football team. And the thing is, you mentioned great shortstop, but he also pitched 21 innings this year with a .762 ERA. Uh, I think he's a guy that you can plug in and say, hey, I need, I need two good innings out of you, right, to close us out. Uh, and I think he is somebody that they could plug in throughout the tournament, and he's going to be invaluable. And, you know, everybody's got these great starters. Everybody's got these great hitters. I think he is a guy that can do both and could potentially be that glue that wins a team of state championship that that comes out of, you know, quote, nowhere, right? Right. I, I think the 3A is shaping up to be one of the most exciting tournaments, again, overall. And Logan Green and Glenn Jones uh, will be on the call for those games. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Northwest Nazarene University in Nampa. Uh, beautiful field. They've got a nice little party deck with a couch out there kind of down the, yeah. the third base line. And, uh, it's it's going to be a good time, and we're excited to see you guys in action and all the teams in action starting on Thursday. Uh, we will take another break and come back with our two-way state baseball tournament uh, preview right after this on IdahoSports.com. 